This is the recording for Topic 17-2, Symmetry and Reflections. First, we're going to talk about lines of symmetry. In our examples, we're going to draw lines of symmetry, if they have them, for any of the following figures, and then list how many lines of symmetry we can draw. A line of symmetry is exactly what it sounds like. It is a line in which you can draw in a figure that will split the figure into two parts in which it looks like the same on both the left side or the right side or the upside and the downside. So when you split the figure into two parts, you see the same exact thing on both sides of the line. So if I look at my first one, I can think this hexagon looks like there's a line of symmetry that goes down the middle of it. If I draw a line down the middle, and then ask myself if what I see on the left is that the same as what I see on the right. I'm going to do a little trick and say what I see on the left is that what I see on the right. And sure enough it does look that way and so there's one of my lines of symmetry. So I drew those through the sides. Let's see if that works out for all of the sides. If I draw a line, do what I see in this case, below it, the same as what I would see above it. So if I was to be able to bend this figure over, am I seeing the exact same thing? And I would say yes in this case. So I do have another line of symmetry through these opposite sides. That makes two lines of symmetry so far. Let's see what happens if I do across the other two sides. Do what I see below it is that the same as what I would see above it. In this case, I would agree that is what I see. So let me draw another line of symmetry. Now I can ask myself, are there any others? So far, I have one, two, three. Let's see if I can find some more. What about are in these corners where the two, where the sides meet. So I'm starting off just by putting this and seeing. All right, what I see over here on the left, is that going to be the same as what I would see below? And I would have to agree that it is. I've got my square so I can see between it. So again, what I see uh, to the left of it, same as what I see to the right. So yes, I do have another line of symmetry that makes a total of four so far. Well, let's see if I can connect these other corners. Let's see, if, what if I see to the left, the same as what I see to the right? And I would have to agree they are the same. So that makes a total of five, and then I have two more, or one more, six. Our first object or figure has a total of six lines of symmetry. We're going to kind of do the same thing with our figure in B. I want to look to see, can I find some lines in which if I draw it, do I see what's on the left the same that's on the right? Let's try this first up and down one. That looks symmetrical. What I see on the left is the same as on the right. So there's one. Let's go across. There's two. So the horizontal and vertical ones seem pretty easy. Let's see if I do across the diagonals. So I'm going to cheat a little. Let's see. What I see above is the same as what I see below. I would say that's a great line of symmetry. And then let's do that last little corner to corner. So it makes three, then it makes four. So in this case, there are four lines of symmetry. In C, we have two circles. Now, it doesn't matter where I intersect the circles. If I cut the circles in half, what I see on one side is going to be the exact same thing as I see on the other side. And it will not matter if I was to rotate this in different ways. 
as long as I am going through the center of the circle, what I see below and what I see above is going to be exact same way. So as long as I am drawing that line of symmetry through the center, I can have infinitely many lines of symmetry because I could draw them really close together and as long as I'm going through that center it doesn't matter. So we call this one it has infinitely many. That's the infinity sign. So infinitely many lines of symmetry. When I look at D, I cannot, there's no way in the world that I can break this or split this apart and be able to get the exact same thing on one side of my card that I see on the other side of my card by flipping them. They're a little bit different and so I can't split it diagonally. I definitely can't split it up and down. What I see in the top and the bottom are totally different, so they are not symmetrical either. So in D, we have no lines of symmetry. So now that we've done the lines of symmetry, let's talk about reflections. We can reflect an object across a line. And so the lines that we're going to start off with are your actual axes. So we'll start with the x-axis. The first thing we have to do is look at the points that we're given. Our point A, when we are talking from, when we're counting from the origin. Remember, when you name your points, you count from the origin. So this is 3 to the left, which means I'm going negative 3. And then 1, 2, 3, 4 up, so that's a positive 4. For B, we're moving to the right from the origin. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right, so that's a 4 in the x direction, and then up 2, so that's a positive 2 in the y direction. For C, we're moving 1, 2, 3 to the right, so that's 3 positive in the x direction, and then in the y direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Up 7, so that's a positive 7. So now I want to take those three points and we're going to reflect them across the x-axis. You need to know which one is the x-axis. So I'm going to highlight the x-axis so we know this is the line in which we're going to reflect it across. So that means what I see above this line, I should also see the exact same thing below the line. So knowing that the x-axis is my line of symmetry, all my picture should go below that line in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. We'll start with one point. Let's start with the X, or sorry, the A point. So if I'm going across the line, I'm going to count how many spaces does it take to get to that line. It's going to take one, two, three, four spaces to get to the line, which means I need to do four spaces on the other side of that line to get the new A point. So one, two, three, four. Here's my new A point and we will call that A prime. So again, what I see above is going to be the same as what I see below. That new coordinate, if I was to count it, well, it is still three spaces to the left, so that's a negative three, but now from the origin I'm going four down to get to my new A prime and since I'm going down that becomes a negative 4. Let's do B. Again to get to my line of my line that I'm reflecting across I'm going down 2 to get to the line so I need to go down 2 more to get to the other side. Here's my new B prime. Those coordinates to get from the origin would be to the right 4 but this time down 2 so that means I'm going to a negative 2. Point C, to get to the line, we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to get to my line. So now I need to go 7 on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's my new C. We'll call that C prime. Its coordinates, again, from the origin is 3 to the right, which means it's a positive 3 in the x direction, and 7 down, which means it's a negative 7 in the y direction. So now let's take a look at our original points and our new points and see if we can make a conjecture from it. So in looking at our points, we see that A was at negative 3, positive 4, but my new A is at negative 3, negative 4. 
I forgot to connect my dots so I can actually see the figure does look like the figure I started with. You should use your ID in order to connect the dots. It's a nice straight edge. I did not do that. All right, so let's look at these numbers. I have a negative 3, 4, and then a negative 3 and a negative 4. Let's look at our B. We have a positive 4, 2, and a positive 4, and negative 2. For C, we have a positive 3, 7, and a positive 3, negative 7. Do you notice when we reflect across the x-axis, you should see that your x-coordinates stayed the same. So after my reflection, my x-coordinates stay the same, so this x stayed the same. Let's look at what happens with the y. The y went from a positive, did not get my highlighter, it went from a positive 4 to a negative 4, and then from a positive 2 to a negative 2, and a positive 7 to a negative 7. So what's happening with the y is that our y changed its sign. So to change its sign, I put a negative in front of the y. That will change the y-coordinate sign. So when reflecting across the x-axis, our x values stay the same, but our y values are going to change signs. This makes sense because, in a sense, I started in positive y territory and I moved to negative y territory. Let's look at another reflection. We are reflecting, again, triangle x, y, z across the y-axis. So this time, since it's the y-axis, let's highlight the y-axis. The y-axis is the one that goes vertical. So when I'm doing this, what I see on my right-hand side, I should see on my left-hand side when I'm done. Let's get our coordinates for our original. Again, we start from the 0, 0 origin. And then to get to my x coordinate, we're going to go to the right 2. So it's a positive 2 in the x direction. And then we go up 1, 2, 3, 4. Then the y coordinate, we're going positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So to the right 6, it's a positive 6. And then up 2. So the y coordinate is a positive 2. And then z. We're going to the right 2, it's a positive 2, and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that becomes a negative 5 because we went down. To reflect it across the y-axis, I'm just going to count the spaces to go from my original point to the y-axis. So that will be 2 to the left, that means I need to go 2 to the left from that point, and here's my new x prime. I should say 2 to the left from the y-axis itself. If we look at point Y, we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to get to my Y axis. So I got to go the same distance on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then Z, I am 2 to get to the Y axis. So I got to go 2 to get to the Y axis from point Z, and that'll be my Z prime. So we now have our X prime, our Y prime, our Z prime and we can connect those dots. Again, I say use your straight edge to connect the dots. And then I can see that my figure that's on the left-hand side looks like my figure that's on the right-hand side. It is equal distance from the y-axis. Now, let's come up with our coordinates, our x-coordinate. Our x prime coordinate, remember you're going from the origin. This time we're moving to the left 2, so our x value becomes a negative 2. And then we go up 4, so our y value is a positive 4. To get the y prime, we're moving to the left in the negative direction. That's going to be a negative 6. And our y is a y direction is positive 2. And then for z, we're going to the left a negative 2. And we're going down a negative 5. We're down 5, so it's a negative 5. So in this one, let's look at what's happening on this one. If your coordinates are x and y at the reflection, what's going to be our new coordinates? So if I look at my coordinates here, we reflect it across the y-axis. So let's look at our y-values. I go from 4, oh, it stays 4, 2, 
to negative 5, negative 5. So our y value stays the same when I'm going across the y-axis. What happens with our x value? If we look again, our x value go from 2 to negative 2, 6 to a negative 6, 2 to a negative 2. So notice that my x values are changing signs. So if I'm going from a positive x, which was given, I will now make it a negative x once I reflect it across the y-axis. So in this case, our y-axis, our y stay the same, but the x's change. So what happens when we reflect it across the line y equals x? Well, let's find our coordinates first. Start with coordinate r from our origin. We're going 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left, so that's a negative 4, and then up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up, so that's a positive 6 in the y direction. S, we're going 1 to the left, so that's a negative 1, and then up 2, positive 2. T, we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the left, so that's a negative 6, and then down 1, so that's a negative 1. Now, to get it reflected across the line y equals x, if I start over in this area for your original, that means my new must be down in this area. And just like we did in previous ones, we want the distance from the points to be the exact same when I'm going um, above this line to below this line. So the way that this works, is that in order for that distance to be equal, I have to think how far have I traveled in order to get there. So I'm going to tell you what your new points are so that you can, I want to see if you can come up with the pattern to this one. Our new point R is going to be at 6, negative 4. So if I plot it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, here's my new R. If I was able to measure the distance R, my original point R, to this line, it'll be the same distance as from the line y equals x to my new R prime. S prime is going to be 2, negative 1. So I'll go positive 2 to the right and down 1. Here's my new S prime. T prime is going to be negative 1, negative 6. So I go to the left 1 and down 6. And here's my new T prime. If I connect them, then I can visualize that, yes, they have been reflected. So let's see if you see the pattern on this one. You should notice that my x's now became my y's, and my y's now became my x's. I like to think of this as looking, if I look at the actual line itself, it's telling me that my y values are now my x's which means my x values have to be my y's. So when I see y equals x, that tells me I'm going to change my y values to x and my x value to y, because that tells me, hey, my y equals x is, and my x is equal y. Example five, we are going to reflect it across the origin. When you reflect across the origin, the origin is where the x and the y values meet. So what I like to do for reflecting across the origin, first thing we have to do is find our coordinates. This picture is the same as the very first picture we started with. So I have negative 3, 4 is my a coordinate, b coordinate is 4, 2, and the c coordinate is 3, 7. If I'm going to reflect across the origin, then I need to travel the same distance to get from point A to my new A prime. 
just like when I travel the same distance to the line, this time I'm traveling the distance to the point. So we're going to use what we know about the slope. To go from point A to the origin, we have to go down one, two, three, four. That's down four, and then to the right three, one, two, three. Well, I want to travel that same distance, so I'm going to go down four, one, two, three, four, and to the right three, one, two, three, and this will be my new point A, or my A prime. The coordinate of that, I went to the right three, so that's three, a positive three in the x direction, and I went down four, so that's a negative four in the y direction, again, because I'm counting from the origin. Point B, in order to get to the origin, I have to go down 2 and to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, to the left 4. So I go the same pattern, down 2, to the left 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's my point B. This is my new B prime. Again, follow that pattern of down 2 to the left 4. Down 2 to the left 4 gives me, again, my new B prime. Coordinate of B prime starting from the origin down two, so it's a negative two, and then to the left four gives me a negative four. Last one is C. So my original C to get to the origin, we have to go down seven and then to the left three, gets me to the original origin. So now following that same pattern, going down seven and to the left three gives me my new C prime. If I connect the dots, I have my new figure that has been reflected across the origin. Let's get my coordinates for C prime. If it follows the same pattern as the previous ones, it'll be A negative 3, negative 7. I screwed up on my B prime, y'all. I'm sorry. B prime, going from the origin, I go to the left 4, so it's negative 4, and then down 2, so it's a negative 2. Now I should see my pattern, or you should see the pattern. If we start off with a oh, Except that. So sorry. If I start off with a negative 3, my x went to a positive 3. And when I started off with a positive 4 for my y value, the y value went to a negative 4 for the new one. So what has happened here is that my x's and y's stay the same as far as their value, their number, but their signs change. So I put a negative in front. So if I had a negative x to begin with, it becomes positive. If I had a positive y, it becomes negative. B, they're both positive, so my new values are both negative. C, we have both positive, new values are both negative, but the numbers are the same. All right, so we have gone through three different things. Reflecting across the y, or well, four different things. If we reflect across the y-axis, we notice the y value stays the same, and the x's is what changes. When we reflect across the x, it changes signs, I should say, then the x value stayed the same, and it was the y values that changed. We reflect it across the line x equals y, then the x and the y's changed. change where they were located, they flip-flopped. Let's see, we also did, this was the line y equals x, I'm sorry. And now we have it across the origin. And this is the x's and the y's. Just change the signs. So how can we use the same things in order to help us reflect across lines that are not the x or the y axis? Let's find out. 
Example 6. We're going to reflect the triangle ABC across the line of x equals negative 1. So x equals negative 1 is a vertical line that goes through the point where x is equal to negative 1. So if I plot x equals negative 1, the point, then I need a vertical line that goes through that point. It can only touch the x-axis. So now, instead of reflecting across the y-axis, we reflect across this line itself. We're going to use the same um, process, though. So again, this triangle ABC is the same as before, so our coordinates was negative 3, 4, 4, 2, 3, 7. I'm going to use the same process I used before. I need to travel the same distance um, to get to the line. So if I'm looking at point A to get to the line I'm reflecting across, we would go two spaces to the right. So that means I need to go two spaces to the right to get my new A prime. Now, the hard part on this is you might, when you are getting your coordinates, remember you are going from the origin, not from this highlighted line. So from the origin, my A prime, I move to the right one, and then I go up, one, two, three, four, up four. If I'm looking at B, B is at 4, 2. So again, to get to that line, I'm going to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I need to go five spaces on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's my new B prime. To find the coordinate, though, from the origin, we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the left. So that's negative 6. And then up 2. Now let's go and look at C. To get to the line of C, or to get to the my line, x equals negative 1. I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. So let's go 4 on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's my new value C. And this is my C prime. From the origin to C prime, we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the left, so that's a negative 5, and then we are counting up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 up. When I connect those dots, we now have our new, or our reflected triangle, but it's being reflected across the line x equals negative 1. I would suggest you not try and figure out a pattern. Actually, draw your line, do the reflections, come up with the actual points. Let's look at our last one, example 7. We're going to reflect across the line y equals negative 1. So y equals negative 1, y is find on the y-axis where it's negative 1. Since it's y, it can only touch the y-axis. That means it is a horizontal line that goes to that point. So we're reflecting across the y equals negative 1 line. So our original values, negative 3, 4, 4, 2, 3, 7. Our new point A. Let's see, how far do I have to go down to reach that line? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to reach the line. So we got to go 5 on the other side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the other side. Here's our new A prime. The coordinates, I have to start from the origin. From the origin, we're going to go 3 to the left, which is the negative 3 in the x direction, and then from the origin we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 down, so it's a negative 6 in the y direction. Let's find point B, our new B prime. So to get to my line that we're reflecting across, we are traveling three spaces down, so I need to go three spaces 
continued three spaces down, and this will be my new B prime. Again, to get the coordinate, you're starting from the origin. So from the origin, one, two, three, four to the right. But then down, we're going one, two, three, four down, so that's a negative four. And then to do C, to get to the line we're reflecting across, Y equals negative one, we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I gotta go eight below that line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's our new C prime. And then to do the point, we go from the origin. So this is going to be down 9, so it's negative 9. I'm sorry, I need to go left and right first because it's the x-axis. So it's to the right 3, and then we go down 9, so that's a negative 9. Okay, this concludes the topic for symmetry and reflection. Good luck on your assignment.